was safe for the most part. Did smart things. Well, I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. Safely responsible. Always good to know. Anyways, um, so let's get right into it. You know, I am a very firm believer that at any point in someone's life, you, you come to an area of gray. And there's a point at which something's going to be thrown at you, and you're not too sure what to do with it. You either step back, you go forward, you stay in place, and you really have to think to yourself what you're going to do to get past that. So with that in mind, if I can just get a show of hands, who in this room has had some type of experience like that? We really had to motivate yourself to keep going. Nice, very nice. Well, that's what I'm here to talk to you guys about today. Um, what I'm really hoping is, is that through my story, you guys will be able to walk away from this and say that whatever life throws my way, I'm really going to be able to get past it. Not only just looking through my story, but motivating your mind to overcome the odds. And that's something that I really, really live by day by day. And it's made me a better person, it's made me a healthier person, and it's made me a much more successful person. The first item that I'm going to show you guys... If I could actually get this, I don't know if this thing works. Oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this picture was taken a few years back. And if you don't recognize that person, that was me. Um, I was 100 pounds heavier. I weighed in at 250 pounds at my heaviest. And the real question is, how did I get there? And what did I do to motivate myself to change that habit or change that way? My story really starts back when I was young. I was a uh, maybe about two, three years old, and I was diagnosed at a young age with a disease that gave me severe osteoporosis. The doctors found out very early. And for those of you who don't know what osteoporosis is, it's a disease that basically debilitates your bones. So all the um, marrow that you have in your bones, all the stuff that makes you strong, I don't have that. It makes me very weak. So I had to start hormone replacement therapy at a very young age. So around eight or nine, I had to learn how to inject myself daily, sometimes twice a day, uh, in the thigh, in the arm, wherever it was necessary, to start producing those hormones that I had a lack of and to help me build this bone so that I could actually survive in life. This was something that was very hard for me to deal with. Uh, you can imagine most eight or nine-year-olds don't want to go to the doctor once a year just to get an injection. Imagine having to do it yourself and rely on yourself to survive and inject yourself every single day. So this is something that made me very depressed. And I was not allowed to go out and play sports. Although I was, I guess you could say, popular or had friends in school, I couldn't go out. I couldn't play football like I wanted to play. I couldn't play soccer. I couldn't do anything that was physical because they were so worried that I was going to break my bones. Because I broke them very easily. And I did throughout my middle school, uh, going back my elementary, and even my high school years. Instead of talking to other people about it and expressing my feelings, I hid them. And what I did instead is I ate. I used food as a crutch. I used it as a therapy. And I ate. And I ate myself in a depression. The next picture that I have over here is a picture that I hold very near and dear to my heart. It is a picture that changed my life. My friend took this picture of me. Oh. The, my friend took this picture of me when I was um, living at my own place a couple years back, and she basically said, you're either going to die or you're going to change your life. So I decided the next day that it was very important. I was going to try it again. I went to the gym. I started going seven days a week. Um, I lost about 50 pounds, and through losing 50 pounds, I actually broke my ankle. So I reached another point in my life, a very low, and I had to figure out what I was going to do. So I went to the doctor. I told him, put a waterproof cast on my leg. I'm going to swim laps in the pool. So I did that for six weeks. Healed myself. Believe it or not, a couple weeks later, I broke the same ankle again. So the last 50 pounds that I lost were spent swimming in the pool. So I really motivated myself there to overcome every odd that life's journey had thrown my way. Uh, I did think for some reason that this was the end, and I thought that things were going to get a little bit better. But before the rainbow, there always has to be a storm. Um, later last year, I was diagnosed with pretesticular cancer. I found out after I was biking, I thought it was something that was uh, a pulled muscle. And they basically told me that they had to go in. It was a very invasive surgery. It was very depressing. 
And after surgery, I woke up. I was hoping that things were going to be okay. Uh, unfortunately, the doctor told me that they did have to remove both of them, replace them with two prosthetics, and both were black when they came out, which meant that the tissue was disintegrating. So I was very lucky in one aspect, and it was very detrimental in another. I know I'm out of time here, but I just want you guys to say, through overcoming every odd, okay, I was able to look at myself and look at every aspect of life, and I was able to build something on it. And I was able to tell myself that no matter what, you're going to get through this. A few months after surgery, they told me I would never be able to ride a bike again. That was one of my favorite hobbies. Um, this was about five months after surgery. This was up Mount Soledad. It was about a 30-mile bike ride. And just goes to show you, get back up on that horse. If you fall, you don't fail. You get back up and you do it again. So thanks so much, guys. Yeah.